We, Terracotta Creation present, Exploring the Basics of Kiskit, a Beginner's Guide to Quantum Coding. In our previous videos, we explored quantum superposition, quantum entanglement, the observer effect, and how to install Kiskit. If you need a refresher on any of those concepts, check out the links in the description. Today, we're taking the next step, learning to code on an actual quantum platform using Chiskit. Before diving in, let's cover some essential ideas and the single qubit gates we'll frequently use. A qubit, short for quantum bit, is the fundamental unit of quantum computing. Unlike a classical bit, which can be either zero or one, a qubit can be in both zero and one simultaneously. This property is called superposition, and it gives quantum computers their remarkable power. When we measure a qubit, we see a definite outcome, either zero or one. But until we measure it, the qubit remains in that simultaneous or superposed state. Mathematically, we represent a qubit state as ket psi equals alpha times ket zero plus beta times ket one, where alpha and beta are probability amplitudes. Their squares must add up to one. Two or more qubits can also be entangled, meaning measuring one qubit affects the others instantly, regardless of physical distance. This spooky action at a distance, as Einstein called it, is one of the most fascinating aspects of quantum mechanics. Quantum gates are operations that change a qubit state. Think of them as the quantum equivalent of classical logic gates, except they manipulate probabilities rather than simply toggling a bit. Here are the most common single qubit gates you'll encounter. Number one, Hadamard gate. Often denoted by the letter H, the Hadamard gate places a qubit into an equal superposition of zero and one. You can think of this like flipping a coin into a perfect 50, 50 state. Until you look at it, the coin is both heads and tails. Number two, Pauli X gate. Typically just called the X gate, it flips a qubit between zero and one, analogous to a classical knot gate. If your qubit was definitely in the zero state, applying an X gate will change it to one. Number three, Pauli Y gate referred to as the Y gate. It rotates a qubit around what we call the Y axis of the block sphere, which is a geometric way of visualizing qubit states. By applying a Y gate, you're changing the qubit state in a different dimension than the X or Z gates, affecting both its amplitude and phase. Number four, Pauli Z gate called the Z gate. It shifts the qubit's phase when the qubit is already in a superposition. Essentially, it changes the relative sign of the qubit's possible outcomes without directly swapping them. Quantum gates can be chained together to build a quantum circuit. By carefully planning which gates to use and in what order, we can carry out meaningful computations before finally measuring our qubits. With these foundational concepts, qubits, superposition, entanglement, and single qubit gates, we're now ready to see quantum computing in action with Qiskit. In the next segment, we'll learn the basics of equations used in quantum coding. Let's get started. Let's explore one of the most important quantum gates, the Hadamard gate. Think of it like flipping a coin. It takes a definite state, zero or one, and puts it into an equal mix of both states. If our qubit starts in state ket zero, applying a Hadamard gate makes the measurement outcome equally likely to be zero or one. Mathematically, we can say H applied to ket zero equals one over the square root of two times the sum of ket zero plus ket one. In simpler words, we're turning a certain classical like state into a perfect 50-50 coin flip where the qubit is now in superposition. The Hadamard gate can be represented by a matrix. We say H equals one over the square root of two times the matrix of rows, one, one, and one, negative one. When we multiply this matrix by our qubit, which starts as ket zero, represented by the column vector one, zero, the result is one over the square root of two times the vector one, one, which is the same as one over the square root of two times the sum of ket zero plus ket one, meaning the qubit is now in an equal mix of both states. This is the basic idea of creating superposition with the Hadamard gate. Now that we understand superposition and entanglement, 
Let's explore how they're used to build quantum logic operations. Unlike classical computers, which rely on logic gates like AND, Oregon, and NOT, quantum computing uses linear algebra and probability amplitudes to perform computations. Number 1. Superposition in logic. A classical bit is either 0 or 1, but a qubit can be both at the same time. This allows quantum computers to process multiple possibilities simultaneously, which can provide an exponential speed-up in certain problems. For example, applying a Hadamard gate to ket0 yields 1 over the square root of 2 times the sum of ket0 plus ket1, making it equally probable to measure 0 or 1. This principle underlies many quantum algorithms like Grover's search, which can find a desired item in an unordered list faster than any classical approach. Number 2. Entanglement in logic. In classical logic, each bit is independent. In quantum computing, however, qubits can be entangled, meaning measuring one qubit instantly influences the state of the other, even across great distances. By using gates like C0, we can create relationships between qubits. For instance, if the first qubit is 0, the second qubit remains unchanged. If the first qubit is 1, the second qubit flips. This shared, correlated behavior is a key reason quantum systems can perform certain tasks in parallel and more efficiently than classical systems. Now, measurement and probability in logic. In quantum computing, we never see a definite result until we measure. Each gate modifies the probability of measuring a particular outcome. This makes quantum computing probabilistic rather than deterministic, meaning the same quantum circuit can give different outcomes each time, according to the probabilities set by the gates. In Qiskit, quantum circuits are created in Python and consist of qubits, gates, and measurements. Think of it like building a blueprint for how your qubits will evolve, step by step, before finally reading out their states. Here's a simple outline of how one might build a quantum circuit. First, we will start by importing the necessary tools from the Qiskit library. Type. Import Qiskit. Now create a quantum circuit. We specify how many qubits we want. For example, a single qubit circuit might be described as QC equals quantum circuit with one qubit. Now apply quantum gates. We place gates like Hadamard or Pauli gates on specific qubits to manipulate their states. Next, measure the qubits. Finally, we measure the qubits to obtain our classical results, which let us see how many times they collapse to zero or one across many runs of the experiment. Now let's apply the Hadamard gate in Quiskit to put a qubit into superposition, then measure it many times, say 1000 times, to observe an approximately 50-50 split between zero and one. This demonstrates how the Hadamard gate acts like a quantum coin flip giving us a direct taste of the probabilistic nature of quantum mechanics. Before we jump into coding our quantum coin flip, let's clearly understand the logical steps we follow when building quantum circuits. Quantum programming isn't just about writing code, it's about understanding the quantum states and manipulating their probabilities using quantum gates. Here's how we'll build the logic behind our quantum coin flip. Step 1 initialize. First, we initialize our qubit in a known state, usually the zero state. You can visualize this as starting with a coin that's definitely showing tails. Step 2. Create superposition. Next, we apply the Hadamard gate to place the qubit into superposition. At this point, our qubit behaves like a perfectly balanced coin spinning in the air, equally likely to land heads or tails. Step 3. Measure the qubit. Measuring the qubit collapses this balanced state into a definite outcome. Just like catching a spinning coin, measurement reveals whether the result is heads or tails. Step 4. Simulate and analyze. To truly understand quantum randomness, we'll repeat this process many times, typically 1000, to see how often each outcome occurs. By counting these results, we calculate clear probabilities for heads and tails. This logical flow, initialize, apply quantum gates, measure, and analyze, is essential for any quantum algorithm. Mastering this logic is key to becoming proficient in quantum programming with Qiskit.
Now that we've built our logical foundation, let's start coding our quantum coin flip in the next chapter. In this segment, we're going to create a simple quantum circuit that behaves like a coin flip, showing how quantum mechanics can produce random outcomes. First, we bring in two essential components from Qiskit. One is the quantum circuit, which allows us to build and manipulate quantum circuits. The other is the air simulator, which simulates our circuits on a standard computer so we can see their outcomes right away. Next, we create a circuit with one qubit and one classical bit. Imagine the qubit as our quantum coin, while the classical bit records its final state, either heads or tails. To produce a fair 50, 50 chance, we apply the Hadamard gate to our qubit. Think of it like flipping a coin. The Hadamard gate takes our qubit from a definite zero or one state and puts it into a superposition, making it equally likely to be measured as heads, represented by one, or tails, represented by zero. Once in superposition, we measure the qubit. At the moment of measurement, the quantum state collapses into a definitive outcome, heads or tails, just like looking at a coin after it's landed. We then run this circuit 1000 times, or shots, using the air simulator. The simulator tells us how many times we got heads versus tails. From those counts, we find which outcome occurred most frequently, and we calculate the probability of heads and tails. Finally, we print out two key pieces of information. Which result was most frequent, heads or tails? The probability of each outcome expressed as a percentage. Before you run the code, ensure that your virtual environment is activated. In your terminal or command prompt, you should see something like Venvi before the path. Once everything is set up, just type pythontest.pi. You'll see results along these lines. Quantum coin flip. Result, tails, 0, or heads, 1. Probability of heads, 1, in percent. Probability of tails, 0, in percent. Because quantum measurements are inherently random, the exact numbers vary each time you run the script. Sometimes heads will be more common, sometimes tails, but overall they should hover around a 50-50 split. This demonstrates the probabilistic nature of quantum computing and gives us a fun, hands-on glimpse of how qubits behave. And that brings us to the end of today's journey into quantum computing with Qiskit. We've successfully explored quantum fundamentals, learned how quantum gates like the Hadamard create superposition, and even simulated our own quantum coin flip. But the quantum world is vast, and our journey has just begun. In our next episode, we'll dive even deeper, coding more advanced quantum algorithms and learning how to visualize these fascinating quantum effects clearly and intuitively. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to Terracotta Creation. And remember, press the bell icon to stay entangled with us, ensuring you never miss an update from our quantum adventures. Thanks for joining us today, and see you next time as we continue exploring the infinite together.